Parker, we are only meeting remotely due to the governor's proclamation and regarding the Open Public Meetings Act. And that proclamation number is 20-28. We'll go ahead and do introductions. I'll start off. I'm Alicia Topper, Clark County Treasurer and Chair of the Board. I think Beth will go and call on the board members she sees that are present. We can do brief intros. Yes, thank you, Alicia. Uh, next on the list, I have Erica. Uh, yes, uh, Erica Hefter, CAB District 3 Low Income Representative. Thank you. Uh, next, I have Jamie. This is Jamie Spinelli. What else? I'm sorry, I'm getting my kid ready for school. <laughs> just, 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 just a slight introduction, please, Jamie. Oh, I think I'm District 1 low income rep. Thank you. And I uh, have Melanie next. Hi, this is Melanie Green, and I am District 3 community representative. Good morning. Thank you. And then I see we have uh, Peggy here as a guest. Thank you, Peggy, for being here. We also have our two interpreters present today, and then we have Tom um, again, uh, county staff. Uh, oh, I think we've got more people coming on. It looks like Amy has just joined. Amy, we're welcome, Amy. Good morning. We're just doing introductions. If you're able to unmute and introduce yourself. Uh, hi, this is Amy Rourke, and um, I am. Um, sorry, I just. Kids are ready for school. I'm a little bit here foggy. Um, I'm Amy Work, and uh, what am I supposed to say? I'm sorry. Just the just the introduction and oh. and your role with CAB. Oh, and I am um in District One, right? I think so. Yeah. Thank you. We have a few more people joining the meeting. Just one moment while this updates. Good morning. David, I see you've joined us here. We're just doing introductions. Um, if you are able to just give you an introduction for yourself and your role with the CAB, please. Uh, thank you for your patience with my internet. My name is David Poland. I am the vice chair and I represent the deaf community and low income here in Vancouver, Washington. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Alicia, I'm not sure if we have quorum yet. I, I believe we have six. Good morning, Glenn. I see that you've joined. Good morning. I believe Alisa was, might have been talking and uh, we couldn't hear you, Alisa. Okay, very good. I see someone else just joined us. Yes, it looks like we have had Glenn. And Glenn, um, can you just do a short introduction and confirm your association with the cab? Sure, I am just an interested citizen. I am involved in a lot of things and feel like you have to really understand the issues in order to understand what's going on and be able to make a difference. So I enjoy learning from all, all of you guys. Well, thank you very much for being here. We appreciate you uh, participating as a guest. Okay, so I don't think we quite have quorum yet and we'll have an option at the end of our agenda for uh, public comment. So for those who are on the board, we're going to go ahead and skip item number two and see if other members of the board join us so we have a full quorum. So with that, we'll move to item number three, which is a city of Vancouver update. We'd like to welcome Peggy Sheehan to give an affordable housing fund and homelessness services report. Good morning, Peggy. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Thank you all again. So I have quite a bit to um, share with you. Happy to do that. And uh, the first thing is, some of you might be aware that the Community Roots, which is a grassroots organization that um, is looking at building tiny homes for folks that are homeless, their ground 
their grand opening is on the 23rd and uh, from one to two. And I can um, shoot you over, Beth, I can shoot you over the RF, the um, invitation for that if you'd like to share with the members of the committee. It will be a pretty fun, fun event. I believe Denny Heck is going to be their main speaker. So um, that's be great. Be Thank you, Peggy. And feel free to send that to Rebecca and Royce and myself. Rebecca is going to get some meetings out um, when she's back in the office. Perfect. And it is on the it is the Thursday, the 23rd. And we also uh, the city of Vancouver has a rolling application for the affordable housing fund that's on the city website right now. We have about $12 million that we're looking for projects that are construction or preservation. Uh, feel free to, I'll also send you that link. And um, if you guys know anyone that might be interested in trying to provide housing, we fund, a, we fund up to $75,000 per unit. And I know, Alicia, you're very familiar with that fund. So um, we also are get, just getting ready to release our CDBG and home and affordable housing RFP for services and um, rental assistance. And that'll be out in the next week. We also are looking for funding for Outsiders Inn. Some of you might be familiar with Outsiders Inn. They provide overnight services at St. Paul's Church and the city has funded them. This is our third year, but the funding ends in the end of December. So we're trying to figure out a way that um, we can keep them going after January 1st. And I know you're really interested in the supported campsites. So we're right now we're negotiating contracts with service providers for the supported campsites and safe park sites. Um, we, we anticipate having that process completed over the next few weeks with the hope of taking up to council on the 20th of September. Okay. We're also going to be making recommendations to city council for amending the unlawful camping ordinance. And that is designed to do several things, allow for sanctioned campsites to operate all year and put buffers around critical, certain critical environmental areas where camping will be prohibited at all times. It also is going to create an exemption for nighttime workers who need to sleep during the day. And the first reading on that will be next Monday on the 13th. We're also presenting the site selection to council for approval. Um, and that'll also be at the meeting on the 13th. And we're working with community, with um, Columbia River Mental Health on the creation, creation of a street treatment team and it'll be providing outreach and mental health, substance abuse and physical health services to people that are unsheltered. And it'll be available in both sanctioned and unsanctioned camps. We're also working with SHARE to expand the size and scope of Talking Trash. Um, we're going to be resuming work and discussions around creating a community court. Some of you might we were pretty involved with that with the county last year and due to COVID, we had to halt that. We're going to keep the sanitation sites, and that includes porta potties and hand washing stations and dumpster and trash service in place. And we've added new locations for that around the city. And then we're we do still are doing um, camp cleanups, and about every four to six weeks at the three largest um, campsites. And they these cleanups are just for solid waste removal; they aren't sweeps. And we're also in the process of hiring an encampment response coordinator who will be part of the city's heart team. And that is all I have. So thank you so much for including me. Thank you, Peggy. Are there any questions for members of the board? And I did see that Karen joined us. Good morning. Welcome, Karen. Good morning. Thank you. Sorry for coming in late. I've been coming in off vacation. That's okay. We've had kids this morning and all kinds of fun stuff. <laughs> Peggy, I just have one question. So you mentioned with the affordable housing fund that the city's looking to award $12 million. Correct. So is that supplemented with other revenue or is that two years of the levy? That's two years of the levy. 
we only have one year left. So um, next year in 2022, council will be looking at uh, the, uh, they'll be considering whether they want to re-up that or reauthorize that levy. And that would have to go to the voters, correct? Has to go to the voters. Council has to make the decision and then they'll um, have to have to be out, go to the voters. So be in a, a busy time. Very much so. Well, thank you for taking the time with us this morning. If there are no other questions from the board, we'll move on to our third item of business, which is a legislative update. Good morning, everyone. I'm Thomas Breitenbach with the county. And so for, um, I'm going to give you the update on legislative, I'm going to provide the legislative update today. And first, for the state, there there is no update at this time, but for the federal, um, there is a push to make uh, the 200% of federal poverty level permanent. Uh, previously, the CSBG allowed up to 125% for regular funding, but was increased to 200% during COVID. And so there's um, the hope is to try and make that 200% permanent for us. And then for CSBG re reauthorization bill, it has um, been submitted the HR 5129. So CSBG hasn't been an authorized uh, program for several years, which puts it at risk of um, at, at every budget cycle. Being authorized sets the minimum funding amount where uh, the program cannot be eliminated. Uh, um, that we're hoping that it will be solidified for for a ten years, um, but right now, you know, it's a it is at risk. Is there any questions? Uh, that's about all I have for uh, for fit for updates. Thank you, Tom. Any questions from the board? Hearing none, Tom, I have a quick question. When when does the county council start to work on their legislative agenda for the upcoming session? Yeah, I know. I'm not sure. Maybe if Beth has that answer or not. Otherwise, I can I can get back to you on that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have the specific um, date on when they're working on the agenda, but we can list that for a question and do an email follow up. Okay, I was just wondering because we, we do have a legislative committee of this board and it would be timely if there were items we wanted to work on in the upcoming session to give those via letter maybe to the council for consideration to wrap into their priorities since they do have a, a lobbyist that works on their behalf up in Olympia. So just in terms of timing, I think now is when everyone's starting to put together their their wish lists. Yes, thank you for that, Alicia. I'm uh, making note of that and we'll follow up and get that detail so that we can coordinate with CAB. I really appreciate that. Okay, thank you. And then I think we have quorum now, Beth, am I correct with Karen joining us? I believe we do. I believe we're at seven. I believe seven uh, gets us to quorum. Okay, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and move back to item number two, which was approval of the July minutes. This is for consideration from the board and I would entertain a motion. Uh, I'm David and I would propose that we approve uh, the minutes from two months ago. I Thank second. You, Melanie, and I second. So I think we had Melanie with a second. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please voice. Aye. 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 Any opposition, anyone opposed? Okay, motion carries seven zero. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so bumping back ahead, uh, we have a July 2020 to June 2021 outcomes report, and I believe that will be Tom. I think I think that may be me. <laughs> that may be me. Okay, um, actually, Beth, I think that one is. I think the report. I um, Rebecca had asked me to go over it. You're welcome okay. to Beth if you would like. Um, let me. Do you have the PowerPoint or would you like me to share my screen? I think that might be easier. If Go I ahead just, and just share your screen, it's fine. Okay, one second here. 
Let me let me escape out of the PowerPoint. <laughs> Okay. Let's see, how's the view for everyone? I'm not sure how that looks. Does that look okay? Can yeah, yeah it's it's just so you know it's just cut off just um just on the bottom the there. Box. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Tom, let me know what you want me to scroll and when you want me to move through the pages. Okay. Go ahead and you can go ahead and scroll up a little bit. I, I believe everyone I received a copy of it, so I'm just going to do a quick kind of overview a little bit. Um, so there was a participation participant satisfaction um, survey done, and a, a little over 11,000 people were surveyed, and about 14% of them had responded. And out of those, uh, it was 85.7 who indicated a positive overall experience, which is good. Um, and then there was a couple notes here about some comments that people made about how helpful was uh, gen this gentleman or uh, person, I'm sorry, um, had indicated that they were appreci appreciated the fact that they had a hotel um, and where they could shower and refrigerate and cook um, and do their laundry, which was um, always really helpful. So next slide, please. So um, there's so the community action program, uh, there was four uh, sections of that. Um, one was employment um, with, with partners and careers. Another one was uh, health and social behavioral health with Clark County food banks, shares hunger response, income and asset building with Clark College, and supportive services with 211 and volunteer lawyers. There was also the homeless crisis response system programs, which included wrapper housing programs, permanent supportive housing programs, targeted prevention, interim housing, outreach and engagement, emergency shelters, system coordination and data collection, and core system programs such as the SOAR and the rent well programs. Any questions so far about what those different programs mean? Okay, great. So, some expenditures. Uh, so, it was required that they have that the programs have 100% spend out by the uh, by June 30th, 2021. Um, the the majority of them had were able to for community action programs. Um, Clark College was not able to spend all, all of the emergency grant funds that was allocated, and then and then because of COVID. Um, Tick was also not able um, to because um, directly related. In fact, for the majority of these, even when we talk, even, especially when we talk about the homeless crisis response system, that they, they were in, they were impacted by COVID, and which decreased their ability to be able to spin out some of the funds. We actually had requested that they focus on getting some of the dollars out the door to try and um, um, for the new COVID relief funds. Uh, you, you may have heard of them, you know, where to prevent people from becoming homeless. Um, there was a significant increase um, in in those funds and the need for these agencies, um, the majority of these agencies to help us get that money out the door, which did affect their ability. However, a lot of these funds, all the state funds were, were spent out and a lot of the other funds were recaptured and will be re, um, reused the following year. Next slide, please. So, um, so for the uh, the cap system pro performance, there was we had many, far exceeded the expectations, um, especially when it came to health and social behavioral um, health, uh, where we had three hundred and seven percent from what we expected um, to do, and again, you know, a lot of this is related to the pandemic, such as the Clark County Food Bank, um, where they got an increased a number of people accessing or needing to access food because of their limited income. Um, they actually, the Clark County Food Bank uh, provided over a million pounds of food, which is the equivalent of 
8.3 space shuttles. I, I like Rebecca's, um, you know, examples. It's always neat, uh, kind of puts it in perspective. The volunteer lawyers program helped 196 households. Um, 31 people approved their credit scores and 18 resolved their legal issues. Share Hunger Response Program provided 98,727 meals at Share House. And Janice Youth Oak, Oak Brook Youth Shelter helped 63 youth exit to safe and stable housing. Next slide. So homeless crisis response system performance, um, you'll notice that there's a huge significant increase with the core system program that's mainly related to the Housing Solutions Center um, and the COVID response funds that we, we, we've been um, prioritizing. There, there's been a much higher number of people needing to act services than, than ever before because of the COVID crisis right now. And so about, you know, 6,363 apparently, um, which is 600% higher or 500% higher than anticipated at 642%. So next slide, please. So again, um, homeless crisis response sense of performance, uh, it was ex uh, the target for prevention. One example where there was an increase of, they were, they served over 200% more. Um, they were actually, because there was other prevention funds, they were able to uh, use some of these, uh, other, these targeted funds from the homeless crisis response system, um, toward, towards helping other people, um, who who might need more long-term assistance. Um, and so they were be able to target these funds even, even more so. And then uh, as far as increasing income, I, if you go back to this slide, I, there was a significant amount of additional funds that went out for unemployment services which help people maintain their, their, um, their income. So, so that kind of helped keep these numbers high. So, Tom, is it safe to say that there's a direct correlation with some of those um, federal or state entitlement programs and people being able to stay in their homes? I would say um, it's in two ways. When, when it comes to income, uh, they did receive un, uh, unemployment, additional unemployment, um, which helped a little bit. And then, yes, I, I think that there are those who receive those rental assistance funds did yes they did they are have been able to stay in their homes has made a huge difference so um we're still working on getting the money out the door um and so it'll continue to be an increase as we move forward, as we, move forward. we anticipate so, these numbers so to just those numbers to just double so this slide that we were just looking at though was that specific to household income and yes. does rental assistance funding count as income no, it does not. Okay, so those two things are separate. Okay, they are, and um, so the unemployment uh, stipend that they they get the additional um, is counted as income, but we don't usually count it as income for um, eligibility purposes and programs such as these. Okay. But but they're still counted as income okay. uh, when we're assessing how well they're doing. It'll be interesting. I don't know if the other board members think this, but looking at the numbers from 2021 and then looking at future years where we won't have this infusion of assistance and to see what <laughs> we're gonna have to have a little footnote i think at the end of all of our numbers because these are just i mean astronomical in comparison to prior years yes yes they are everything's been affected by COVID in one fashion or another whether it's the stimulus money coming in or whether it's uh people being unemployed and not accessing certain services in a, in a few areas, I noticed it did drop, and then other areas, it, it just excelled. So, well, the need is real. So, okay. yes, definitely is. And then here's some demographics. Um, we, I know that uh, our as a system, we've been taking steps to try and be um, to serve 
underrepresented or traditionally underserved um, populations. And so hopefully this reflects that. Um, I don't have the comparisons information to show the difference between prior years, but I know that there have been active steps to try and um, work toward that. Um, uh, there's a disproportionate number um, of females um, who are accessing as um, services uh, compared to males. Um, and so I think. And, and Tom, I'll just jump in. This is Beth with the county. Um, Council for the Homeless does um, have some additional reports that can look at data across the system and um, including some equity data and equity reports. So if anyone's interested in that, feel free to visit Council for the Homeless website and their data points for more Thank information. You. Yeah, that's a good point. Good point. So, and I know there has been increases. That's why I thought it was definitely worth mentioning. Um, We've been doing much better as a system. Any other questions regarding demographics or anything else that was in the slide? I think this is our last slide. Anyone have questions for Tom? Great, thank you for uh, letting me uh, present today. Thank you for that good information, appreciate it. Uh, so next will be Beth. We're going to hear about additional funding overview. Hey, everyone. This is Beth with Clark County. So I'm going to go through these fairly quickly. Um, feel free. We can go back to the slides depending on if, um, if there's any questions. Um, feel free to read the context. Um, this is a general overview. Rebecca was kind enough to put this together and hopefully have it be um, a nice snapshot of the variety of funding that's been coming through our office and the different um, COVID relief efforts and COVID funding that has uh, occurred. So we're actually starting back um, in 2020 with this shelter capacity grant. So if everyone remembers when the county um, worked with our partners um, and Motel 6 to start the quarantine and isolation program, as well as a non congregate shelter, um, that is funding that um, came in and allowed us. Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm mixing. I am mixing up my own grants. Uh, the, the shelter capacity grant, I apologize, is a new grant that Tom is uh, working with. So this is um, from the state of Washington in an effort to increase uh, shelter beds throughout the state of Washington. So this funding uh, supported the purchase of the um, uh, Howard Johnson Hotel, which has been converted into non congregate shelter. Um, and will be opening this year. Apologies for the mix up on that. <laughs> uh, next, we have our quarantine and isolation shelter. So the CARES Act funding supported the quarantine and isolation shelter. Um, and this was in combination with um, the state of Washington funding as well. And um, that was a very large partnership. Again, this was the effort with Motel 6 with public health uh, to have the quarantine and isolation um, shelter as well as a non congregate shelter at the Motel 6 site. Uh, next, we have the homeless crisis response system services that were supplemented by the CARES Act funding. So all of our uh, contracted providers at the time uh, were asked um, about CARES Act funding um, and making sure that everyone was able to continue operations during the pandemic. Um, focusing on making programs whole and allowing for additional supports during the pandemic. One second while I get my mouse back over to the other screen. It's trying to escape me. See if this will work for. There we go. Oh, okay, I may skip one. Okay. Next, we have additional CSBG COVID funding. So this was additional CSBG funds provided through the CARES Act. Funds were allocated to existing community action cap programs um, through a mini application process to increase the capacity of their program. And the contracts are operating through September 2022. Uh, the next one, which is a very significant program, is the eviction rent assistance program. So from CARES Act funding provided by Commerce to 
um, uh, for eviction prevention rental assistance, and just over 2,000 households were assisted, and that funding ended uh, June 30th, 2021. We also have Emergency Solutions Grant COVID funds, or ESG CV for the acronym. Um, this is supporting shelter, outreach, and rapid rehousing programs. This grant ends September 30th, 2022. We next have the County ARP funds, and that is the American Rescue Plan Act, or um, ARP funds. Um, Funds from this over $15.5 million approved by county council to support the homeless crisis response system, um, including outreach, shelter, rapid rehousing, and PSH services. Contracts are under development right now. Um, we have few executed, including outreach, motels, um, and a few others that have likely gone through this, uh, this last week. All those programs are anticipated to go through December 31st, 2024. Uh, the the, uh, the um, rules with the ARP funds do allow for uh, a longer contracting time. Right now, we're aiming for 2024 um, for planning and um, consistency across programs. Okay, and then we have the Treasury Rent Assistance Program. The county receives two allocations, so it's it's the same funding. One um, allocation comes directly from Commerce, the state of Washington, and another comes directly from the Department of Treasury. So the funds were are used for eviction prevention rent assistance. The first two allocations received and allocated to 12 housing providers um, and several by and for outreach providers as well. From April 1st through August 25th, $12.7 million have been distributed into the community serving over 1,600 households with rent and or utility assistance. I just want to read that again. That's so amazing. $12.7 million have gone out to Clark County helping over 1,600 households. The first allocation contracts in place through December 31st, 2021, with an option to extend to uh, June 30th, 2022 if needed. The second allocation is not yet received and must be spent by September 30th, 2025. And you can see that total there is $30 million, which is just, uh, it's incredible how much work all the providers are doing right now to help our community. So Beth, for the Treasury Rent Assistance Program, do, when those funds are given to the county, does the county council authorize the specific use of those funds or does it already come with a designation when you receive it? So the the funds to so to my knowledge and Rebecca may be able to provide some additional clarification and Tom, feel free to jump in if you if you have more specifics on the process. Uh, to my knowledge, there's specific allowances for this, this funding stream and how it can be used, um, you know, specific ways it can be used, um, a, a lot of very intensive um, guidelines. Uh, so I do believe we have the process of going through, you know, some of our, our budget authority and, and spending authority approvals. Um, and because the funds are to be used in such a distinct way, there's there's not, not too many more other options in regards to the funds. So to my knowledge, there's budget authority, um, staff reports approval, but I don't think as far as, you know, a specific intended use, I think that's dictated by the guidelines. Tom, do you have any other information? No, I think that's, you're exactly right. Um, it's just, it's because it's only limited to rent and utility assistance uh, payments. It, um, there's no need for, yeah, for additional approval on that. What, what the funds are going to be used for. Okay. I only ask because I know, I believe Mason County their treasurer went to the county council regarding these funds and was able to work with Department of Commerce to allow the use for people that are subject to foreclosure, since that's similar to an eviction um, due to like, you know, uh, unpaid property taxes or other um, housing related costs. So that was my only question. I was just wondering how that fit. I know there's another um, block of funds going directly to commerce from treasury that are specific to homeowners and assistance, but I just didn't know how much flexibility there was in a specific allocation. For these funds currently, we, we don't have authority to use for that for anything but rental assistance. And I haven't heard that that option um, yet. It might
might be, but maybe, like you said, maybe it would require um, a special request. Yeah. So, uh, right now we such have such a huge need. There are far more um, people out there who need this rental assistance than can, we can actually assist. So we're, we're, we would like to continue focusing on, on providing the rent assistance and then at least at least in, until we've met the need which unfortunately i don't think we're going to meet the all of the need even with thirty thousand plus dollars or 30 million plus dollars um, unfortunately but we should be, be able to make a really good impact regardless so. okay any questions for beth Any board members have questions in regards to any of the information presented? Hearing none. Uh, is there anything else on this part portion of the agenda, Beth? No, that's everything. And, and again, just uh, just a big thank you to the providers. I, I think you guys can see from the numerous yeah. slides how much money has just come through and how busy everyone has been uh, and our providers have been working very hard so just uh, just to echo a large appreciation for their efforts yeah thank you for for sending that acknowledgement i agree i know our service providers have been stretched very thin and this is a it's a good problem to have when you have more funds to assist people who are in need so um, i'll I'll, uh, I'll add my appreciation onto yours beth thank you for that um, the next item on our agenda this morning is our January meeting trainings, and I believe um, Beth, you're going to go over this with us. Yes, okay, so, um, so some for some discussion during the January meeting training, um, it's, we're going to focus on what kind of structure to have in place. We want to uh, make sure that we're getting feedback from board members around information that you feel would be helpful. We do have our RFA for the homeless crisis response and community action programs coming up. So to support that RFA process, uh, staff, which uh, is usually Rebecca, led by Rebecca, um, support with Michael and I as well, um, to look at best practices within the homeless crisis response system, um, housing types, and what makes them effective. RFA questions, what to look for in the RFA answers, and software application training so you're able to navigate the software used uh, that hosts the RFA and the application materials. So those are the intended topics and that's what we've done at the previous RFA. If anyone has feedback, uh, questions, anything else that you'd like to see included, I'd like to get your feedback on this. Thank you, WebEx assistant. Okay. <laughs> uh, are there any questions? Um, this will be my first round of scoring for the RFA process. So I, I don't know what to ask other than what you're presenting. Is there anyone on the board who has participated in the past that might have additional questions or requests? Um, more areas I, of focus? I do this, Amy. Is this, uh, well, Tom would probably be honest. Is this like the one I did before, Tom? Mm -hmm. Is he still it, it, it's similar. Um, okay. I think it's a larger. It's much right. larger. Oh, okay. The, the process will be somewhat similar. Right. Okay. I get it. Yeah, that's that's correct, Amy. If so, for some of you that had participated on the smaller subcommittees, for example, when the ESG CV had a subcommittee for scoring. We did a presentation. We talked about how to use the application um, to view the view items and in general what the application RFA was requesting and the questions, just a, a brief overview of the process. This will definitely be a more in-depth training uh, just because the RFA is, is much larger this go around. Uh, but similar similar idea, right? We want to give you an idea of the best practices uh, for the different service interventions, the housing types, what's available, uh, the questions that have been posed uh, for people that are submitting applications, and again, just the software overview and, and how to navigate the system that we'll be using. And how many hours will the training be? I believe this will be an all-day 
training. I will have to double check with Rebecca. I do believe that we try to set up a longer training in January. I may be mis mixing that up a little bit, but I, I believe the January training is a little bit longer. So this would be in lieu of our, our normal kind of retreat. I believe so, yes. Okay. Hey, any other questions? Okay, hearing none. Thank you for that overview, Beth. Looking forward to learning more about the process. And I did, I was on a subcommittee. The software was very intuitive and, and easy to use. So I think that's a great platform personally. Okay, thank you. And if anyone does does have any questions that come up later, feel free to email Rebecca and share your notes. We'd love to get those captured if you have anything come up later on. Okay, wonderful. So we do have an action, another action item on the agenda. It's the CAB application review committee. So we have um, two members that are up, their term expires at the end of the year. And so we will be opening um, our application process to be on the board. We do need a committee to review those applications. Um, is And so I'm asking today if there's anyone here this morning that would be willing to volunteer to review applicants who apply to be on our board and make a recommendation to the full board. I would, this is Amy. This Thank is Jamie, you. I would. Thank you, Jamie. Are there any other members who would like to participate? I'm not gonna officially be um, having people, I guess, go over mine, I'm not sure. But um, for the other two positions, I'm willing to help with that. Okay, thank you, David. Okay, so we have three members of the committee, which I think is sufficient. Um, so it'll be Amy, Jamie, and David. And then um, Beth, if, if Rebecca needs an additional person, I'm happy to sit in as well. Thank you, Alicia. I, I think um, that would be a, a preference just in case there's any changes or due to availability, just having that additional coverage would be helpful. Okay. Okay. So we'll be a four member committee. Very good. And I know two of which me are and on. coming up. So I, I think that, yeah. He is, Amy, but um, because David is an open seat, he doesn't have to compete for his seat. Okay. It is one of like the original designated positions, so we don't have to open it up to everybody. He just needs to reapply. Oh, okay. But good question. Okay, so that will conclude our application review. Thank you for those that volunteered to be on the committee. Um, now is the time on our agenda where we will open the floor for anyone from the community who wishes to discuss anything they heard today or bring up any other items that are um, pertinent to the cab. So, Glenn, I know that you joined us today. I'm not sure if there's anyone else from the community here with us virtually, but this would be your opportunity if you wanted to take time. Okay, hearing no response, I think we'll go ahead and close the public forum and other business. Um, our next meeting is going to be November 2nd. Um, it will be from 8 a.m. until 9.30 a.m. And right now the location is to be determined. Uh, currently the governor's proclamation for virtual only meetings ends on September 30th. Unless there's an additional extension or some other change um, that we do have the option of potentially meeting in person. So I think Rebecca is going to be working with us um, board members to determine what that best format will be. And of course, taking into consideration any public health um, recommendations. So uh, the other thing I'd like to throw out there is um, for 2022, I know we have several new members of the cab and we haven't revisited our meeting time um, in quite some time. So we meet at 8 a.m. and I'm not sure if that's still working for everyone. So I would like some feedback from obviously those on the call were able to make it this morning, but would you like to see some options of other times of the day um, for meeting? 8 a.m. can be hard for folks, especially with kids in school and other things going on. Yeah, I would, Amy would, 
definitely. Yeah, school. Um, same here as the other one that had a kid getting ready for school at meeting time today. Okay. Well, I think it would be worth sending out a survey monkey um, or a survey of, of options. Do you think that's possible, Beth? Yeah, I think uh, we can get that out. Rebecca or I can get something out and check in on meeting time. So we'll try to do that soon so we can get that updated ahead of the November meeting for everyone. Okay, well, and if it isn't able to be completed by November, at least setting maybe if if it works for everyone on the CAD um, starting in 2022. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Um, is there is there any preference or desire to look at the November meeting time or, or just for 2022? Um, I will leave that up to Rebecca's discretion, depending on her workload. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Can I okay. ask that you also make sure to include uh, evening options as well? Because a lot of the times when I'm volunteering and applying to volunteer things, uh, people of some privilege, they are choosing to have meetings like at four o'clock in the afternoon. And that could make it so that if I get a job that I'm not able to continue to be in those volunteer positions. So I agree with those uh, women are saying they have kids in school. So they're concerned about 8 a.m. in the morning. For me, I would like to see if we can have it later in the afternoon when those kids are out of school, but also people out of work. I can definitely talk to Rebecca and see what options she has with her schedule. I do know that she has to be available to help facilitate the meetings. Um, so I'm not sure how broad this, the range can be in, in times, but I'll definitely give her the feedback that a variety of meeting option times would be appreciated. Okay, thank you. And we may find after surveying all the board members that this is the best time, um, but I think it's at least worth sending a notice out to see if it still works for everyone. Okay, any other items of business, any reports from our board members before we adjourn? Melanie, are the school kids, are you guys, are you guys in the classroom? Yep, kids are back in the classroom with masks and distancing and things are going well so far. Kids were excited, families were excited to be back. So we're all happy about that. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. I see that the community needs assessment final report is ready. Did, I, did we talk about that? Um, you know, it wasn't on my original agenda, but I okay. do see it there. Uh, do you have any update on that, Beth? So, uh, other than what's available there, I don't have too much of an update. Uh, the final report is ready. I believe the weight is on printing. Uh, so I believe, um, the printed versions um, will will focus on um, some primary languages, but upon request, um, additional prints in various languages can be made available. So as soon as Rebecca has those available for disbursement, I'm sure she'll be sending out a notice and update. Okay. Thank you. All right, any a, other comments? I had a quick question. I don't remember. I think it's Jamie. Who deals with the um, homeless youth again? Was it Jamie that does that? I don't. No, I don't. The homeless youth. No, I, when I mean, whenever I. Oh, as an worker, I did. But oh, is Tom still here? Does he know? I think some, somebody referred me to somebody that deals with the. Homeless youth. It's typically trying... youth. Are you Correct. Amy? Are you um, this is Beth with the county. Are you looking for a contact person or a contact agency? Well, I just was on the um, OSP website and uh, OSPI website and counting the homeless youth this year, you know, just in Clark counties through the schools. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to talk with somebody about, I mean, because we have like close to 1500 here in Clark County this year. So I wanted to, uh, I just wanted to talk with somebody about it. And I remember you guys had said somebody, maybe Tom referred me to who it was. I don't remember, but somebody did. I thought there was somebody that only deals with that mainly. It, it, I think it would be Janice youth would be the main pro provider for, for youth services. So. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. And Amy, there's also, there's also a few programs called the homeless student stability program. And there's a couple of local recipients. I believe that includes council for the homeless and possibly Janice youth amongst others. Um, however, that's a fund that is awarded. 
uh, directly to those recipient agencies and, and does not come through the county offices, uh, but it's Homeless Student Stability Program or H -A -H -S -S -P, and you should be able to find the local okay. recipients for that if you wanted to look into that further. And that's going to focus on, on uh, students who are experiencing homelessness. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay, hearing none, it's 8.51 and I will officially adjourn our September meeting. Thank you everyone for joining us this morning. Thank you, Beth and Tom. Did a great job filling Rebecca's shoes. Thank you. And thank, you uh, thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. We'll see you in November. Thank you. Hi everyone. Hi. I missed it. You did. Hi, Rob. I am sorry. I was lecturing online at a college. That's okay. We just adjourned. Okay. Uh